Hey, hello you guys and welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to show you how to make small cute faces on the potter's wheel and I'm actually going to throw them off the hump which means you just take a big piece of clay put it on the wheel and you only have to center the top part and then you can just throw things on it you can throw bigger things but also smaller things and I often like to just make smaller things from the hump because that way it just goes a little bit quicker you can just throw it cut it off and continue throwing and also the centering is a little bit easier I feel like because centering a smaller piece of clay can sometimes be hard because it's just difficult to hold it in your hands especially if you have bigger hands maybe so yeah that's why I also like to sometimes throw off the hump and I thought I'd show that technique to you today so we're just making some cute faces for spring so without any further ado let's just head over to the wheel and get started the first thing that I do is attach the piece of clay onto the bat with some water. In this case, I unfortunately took a little bit too much water in the beginning, but if you just put some pressure on the piece of clay, it will get stuck. And then it is time to start centering it. And the great thing about throwing off the hump is that you only have to center the top part, since we're only going to throw on top of the top part. So I mainly just put pressure on top of the top part and I start centering this. But sometimes it can be easier to just center the complete piece a little bit, so that it's just not too wobbly, if that makes sense. But if you start struggle with centering bigger pieces it's not necessary to center the whole piece when you're throwing off the hump and then I just center the top part of this ball of clay just like I always center my clay by just coning it up and pressing it down and I repeat this multiple times until the clay is fully centered and I do this by moving my hands towards the shoulder and then the clay goes upwards and then when you have a cone I just slowly press it downwards and the clay can find the middle and then the top part as you can see here is centered then a little thing that i like to do is press my thumb into the clay right at the bottom of the piece of clay that i centered so that i know which part of the clay i'm working with and then it's easy for me to see where i'm going to cut it off later on and then i just start throwing like i always do so the first thing that i do is press my middle finger into the middle of the clay to open up the clay and then I pull the clay outwards towards myself and I always like to hold my left hand on the outside to make sure everything stays centered and then I start pulling up the walls I hold a sponge in my right hand and I press towards my left hand on the inside while making an upwards movement and just like this I turn the clay into a cylinder and then later on we will start shaping the cylinder into a vase If the clay becomes a little bit too wide, you can hold both of your hands around it and slowly press the clay inwards so that it doesn't become too wide. And then I just put it up one more time, just like this. And then when the clay is nice and thin and I have the height that I want, I start shaping the cylinder into a face shape that I like. I always like to make it a little bit thinner here at the top, but you can of course just make it in any shape you'd like. And often when throwing so small, it's quite difficult to keep the top centered and sometimes it can become a little bit wobbly. That is just easy to fix with a needle tool. I hold my left hand on the inside and I hold the needle tool in my right hand and I slowly press through the clay onto my finger on the inside inside and that way I just cut a little bit of clay from the rim and then I go over it with my finger a few times just so that it becomes nice and smooth again because you don't want any sharp edges from cutting off the rim and then the face is actually already finished and I just go over it with a sponge on the inside and the outside to get rid of any water or slip that's on the piece and then something that I like to do before cutting it off is drying it a little bit with a heat gun you can also skip this part and just cut it off but then the piece often loses its perfect circular shape and you might get some fingerprints on it and it will just become a little bit messy so I would recommend to just use a heat gun and dry it if you don't have a heat gun you could also just use a hair dryer and then I take a wooden knife like this and I press it into the clay at the same part where I pressed my thumb into the clay when I started throwing and this is also the part where I'm just going to cut it off so then I take a wire tool and I just pull this through the bottom of the face like this and then you can just easily lift it and as you can see the face looks quite cute and the bottom is nice and flat now I will demonstrate one more face and this time I'm going to cut it off in a little bit of a different way so that you can see that there are multiple ways to do this and then you can just try it out yourself and see what you like best so again the first thing that I do is just start censoring the top part of the clay again which is quite easy and it saves a lot of time because normally you would have to just take a new piece of clay wedge it and then attach it to the bed but you can skip all of those parts because you're throwing from the hump and you can just continue you throw him just like this And 
and here I'm showing you how you can also cut the face off of the hump with a needle tool. In this case I just let the wheel spin very slowly and I carefully press the needle tool into the clay towards the middle and that way you can just slowly cut it off. This technique is a little bit harder than the previous one but it can work a little bit quicker and easier if you have figured out how to do it. <laughs> And then after the piece has dried for one day, it is leather hard and ready to be trimmed. And I place it upside down on top of my giving grip and I start trimming it. So I like to always start off with a small trimming tool to make sure that the whole piece is nice and centered and it isn't wobbly anywhere. And I just cut away some clay at the sides to make the shape nice and round. And then I also always like to cut away some clay from the bottom to make a foot ring. And then I smooth it out with a sponge and then I go over it with this trimming tool. This trimming tool isn't really sharp so it doesn't really trim but it takes away the slip and makes it even smoother and then last but not least I go over it with my finger to smooth it out completely and as you can see the bottom is now just nice and smooth and ready to dry before going into the kiln and after they've dried and gone into the kiln and have been fired it is time to glaze them and I've decided to decorate them with the new Angobus from Bots Glazes which I've tested out in the previous video if you haven't seen it yet I would definitely check it out they sent me a lot of Angobus and I got to try them out so if you'd like to see all of the different colors I would definitely check out the previous video I will leave link down below in the description but for this face i thought it would be cute to just add three little lines here at the bottom because well i thought it would just be fun and cute and I actually threw this piece with a speckled clay. So after the clay has been fired, it will get little speckles. And because of that, I think it's nice to leave some parts unglazed. And that's why I decided to just make some lines on it. And the color I'm using here is Flamingo, which will turn bright pink if everything goes well. So I'm excited to see the finished result. And here's the other face. And I thought it would be fun to make it a little set. So I'm also glazing three lines onto this face. But this time I'm using the color Miami, which is a little bit of a mint green color, which I would think will look nice with the pink and this time I thought it would be fun to add the three lines at the top of the face instead of on the bottom of the face so that they are a little bit different but they will still match. And after the Angobus have dried, I add two coats of clear glaze on the inside and the outside of the faces so that they will become nice and shiny and also water resistant. And after the glaze has dried, I always like to clean the bottoms by twisting them on top of a wet piece of fabric. So that's what I'm doing here. And then the piece is nice and clean and ready to go into the kiln for a glaze fire. And here's the final result. I hope you like it and I think it turned out pretty nice. That was it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked it and I hope you learned something new from it. And if you're going to make these cute faces yourself and you're going to post them on Instagram, please tag me at ColorFernando because I would love to see it. And furthermore, I just wish you a nice week and I hope to see you next week. Bye bye.